Hey guys and welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing some tips I have for studying GCSE chemistry. Now what they've done is pretty bad for chemistry. They've made the GCSE harder and harder and more like AS. They've removed all the things that are no longer in AS and they've added in more and more from the AS specification which is good if you're going to be studying chemistry at AS level but if you're going to drop it at GCSE because to be honest chemistry GCSE is enough for most people it's not it's not good, it's really difficult. I did kind of struggle with chemistry with a lot of the different things that have been moved on from AS which are just really hard to wrap your head around. So in this video I'm going to share four tips with you so that you can get the best grade that you can achieve in GCSE chemistry. My first tip is about taking notes. So what I did for chemistry was take notes directly from the chemistry textbook which I do I no longer have, I had to give it back at the end of last year. However, I still have my notes which I'm going to show you today. So what I did was I made sure my notes were extremely organised, I said hyper organised, it meant that everything was in its exact place, it was exactly from the textbook taken in the exact sections as well, it meant that everything was there, I didn't miss out on any of the key facts that I needed, because in the chemistry exam, if you miss out on one fact from the textbook, you may not be able to get a mark in the exam and maybe some of the one mark answers, which isn't great when you spend all this time revising for a subject and then you get a question that was in one line in the textbook that you just missed which can easily happen. So I'm going to show you my notes and my organisation of my notes now. So as you see, I had my unit one laid out from the textbook with 1.1 to 1.7, which is just how the titles are laid out in the textbook with the exact titles from the textbook. And then unit two, 2.1, 2.9, which is also taken directly from the textbook. And then for my notes, I put the 1.1 at the start, the title, and then my notes followed after. Between each topic, I would either leave a page or I'd always start on the right hand side page. I don't know why, I just thought it looked neater when all they all start like all the topics started on the same page. So I'd finish here and go on to here. And between unit one and unit two, I just left a page in my notes. There's some ion tests, solubility. And then as I went on to unit two, I just left out one page spare which meant that nothing looked too cluttered. So in chemistry, you may have to draw out a diagram in your exam, which should be taken directly from the textbook. So you need to learn the exact diagram that's in the textbook and all the labels that go along with it. But the textbook wants you to know, not what you think you need to know, it's always directly from the textbook because the textbook is written by the people who write the exams. So that's always a good heads up. So in my notes, I do have lots of diagrams taken directly from the textbook and some that I have altered slightly myself just for ease of drawing and ease of looking and I did colour them in with pen to make them stand out a bit more in my notes. So here in my metal and reactivity series section of my notes I have a diagram for collecting gas over water as you see it's taken directly from the textbook I didn't label everything which I should have but that's okay I, did. I probably did in the exam it came up and then here I have the collection of gases over air in a gas jar which is taken directly from the textbook. It, obviously, I'm not great at, I'm not good at art, but I tried my best and the drawings look half decent, which is all you really need for a GCSE. In my notes, I made sure to include a lot of colour because it just helps things stand out. It helps you, like, go, like your eyes fall straight on things that you need to know, some of the harder things you need to know. You, I put in red or I would put like a repeated phrase in the same colour so that it would stand out and I'd go, okay, that's the phrase I need to add every single time. So I'm going to show you my notes on equilibrium and the effects of changing different things in equilibrium. So this is where I covered the effects of changing concentration, temperature, pressure, and I think I have another one over the page. So as you can see, I stated at the start of every single section, Le Chatelier's principle explains that equilibrium will move to undo the effect of the change made, which is just the shorthand of what it actually is, it's just, it is exactly what it is, but that's just the shortest version I could fit in one line. So then I would give out the rules in pink. If one, if more chemicals added, equilibrium moves to remove it. If some of the chemicals removed, equilibrium moves to make more of it. And then I do my way equation and state for facts. So increase the concentration, equilibrium moves to the right to reduce the concentration. Decrease the concentration of reactant, equilibrium moves to the left, example, example, and then it's exactly the same for temperature. I did have to add a wee bit at the bottom in blue, 
reactions that produce more products at lower temperatures are not usually carried out at low temperatures as they'd be far too slow. For example, that's just a tip you do need to know for your exam that I added in out of, outside the colour. I don't even know what happened to that pressure thing, but I, th I feel like that was in the textbook, so I decided to do it. I don't, I have no idea what that means. Anyway. Noopsco. I, as well as the textbook, I really relied on this book here. I bought it at the start of the year, sort of fifth year. It's, it's just the My Revision Guides for the New Specification of Chemistry. It is an amazing book written by the same people who wrote the textbook and also the exams, hint, hint. It's just the textbook, but in a more condensed form. It doesn't have all the information, but it has basically all the information you need to know. I just went over the textbook like the day, couple of days before the exam to make sure nothing was missed. So number two, processes in chemistry. There are quite a lot of processes that you need to learn at GCSE. And so I have found a way of memorizing these processes that just really properly gets into your head. So today I'm going to be showing you the BLAST process procedure. I'm not going to be going into it in any detail. I'm just going to be showing you how I learned it and how I got it stuck in my head so that whenever it came up in the exam, I was able to draw out a quick sketch of it in, on the side of my paper and then fill out all the questions on it, which made the paper so much easier when the first question in unit two was what ore is iron extracted from? So that was nice. I had that exact knowledge in my head, ready to put it straight onto my paper. So I'm going to be showing you the blast process and how I wrote it out to remember it. So this is actually my teacher's idea. So credit goes to Mrs. Morrison for this. So the blast process, you draw out the shape of the, the big machine. Like this, which just is easy enough to remember. And then you have your two layers. Out the bottom comes molten Fe which is the thing you're trying to get out of it. And at the top comes molten slag or calcium silicate. It operates at 1,800 degrees Celsius. And in here goes O2 or air. And out here comes waste gases, which is CO2. Into the top of the blast furnace goes charge. That's just the name for the chemicals that go in to power it up. So we have C, which is called coke, it is just carbon. We have iron or hematite, Fe2O3.SiO2, which I don't have known, but it's hematite or iron ore. And then we also have CACO3, that's what I call it, but it's limestone or calcium carbonate. So then we have our five equations which go with this process, which you do need to memorize because you'll be asked about any one of them. So process number one, this is how you get to 18,000 degrees. So we have C plus O2, this is an exothermic reaction, goes to CO2. That was really bad too. Then number two, CO2 plus more C, because you're keeping and adding in this C, this coke, you get 2CO. Number three, this is the hardest equation to remember. So you're using the thing that was there last, CO plus Fe2O3 goes to Fe, which is the thing you're trying to make, plus CO2. Now, balancing this equation is a nightmare. It is one of the hardest equations that you need to know how to balance. So that's why my teacher gave us something to memorise it by. Threes go with Cs and put a two in front of the Fe, and that's it balanced. Now, number four, we have some things that we haven't used yet. We haven't used the CaCO3 and we haven't used the SiO2. So CaCO3 Ca is next to be used. CaCO3, now this is a thermal decomposition reaction because it breaks down due to heat, breaks down into CaO and CO2. And then we're gonna use this CaO and we're gonna react it with the SaO2 that came off the Fe2O3 to make CaSiO3 called slag, which I like to call CaSiO3, like the calculators. A third tip is a, a third tip is about making posters for chemistry. I personally really enjoy making posters. I do find it slight, somewhat relaxing, even if it is a bit of work. And I do enjoy buying my sharpies at the start of the year to make these posters with. So I have quite a few posters for chemistry, but the main ones went into organic chemistry. I will do another video on organic chemistry if you need, because organic chemistry is really difficult. It's probably the hardest thing in GCSE chemistry, except for equilibrium. 
So I'm going to show you some of my posters and why I made them and how they helped. So this is how I learnt my homologous series that we need to know for GCSE. So I just divide my page in two and I would write out the name with the ending. It didn't exactly work for butane but that's okay. I'd draw out the structural formula and I'd write out the chemical formula and then I'd do my facts at the end. So all colourless gases at room temperature, all colourless gases at room temperature and then I'd also add in any extra definitions I needed, for example hydrocarbon and then on my other one, my alcohols and carboxylic acids, just exactly the same thing. I would write them out with their endings and I would draw out their formulas. Way back at the start I also made like definition lists which I hoped I could do for every chapter. That didn't happen but I do have this good one from chapter one. I also made bigger posters for longer topics so I have my exo and endothermic reaction poster where I just went through a couple of examples and what each of the things are just to get that into my head and I could have it displayed somewhere. The thing people say about posters is that why make them if you're not if you're going to put them up and not never look at them? Well basically what I think about posters is I make them so that I can write out the things because right? for me writing out different aspects of the course helps me get it into my head I did put some of them up and did look at them quite often just to refresh myself every now and again. However, I didn't stick them all over my wall. I did in fourth year, not in fifth year. I just left them in a file and just was able to go back and look at them whenever I wanted. All right, number four. Memorization. Chemistry is very definition and memorization heavy, which sucks, to be honest. It is difficult because you have to get the definitions extremely precise to get all the marks. Sometimes the four marks are only available when you get like five different aspects of the definition which is a bit strange but that is how just how you see a chemistry works for example the definition for soluble i think is the maximum mass of a solid that can be dissolved in 100 grams of water at a given temperature and you have to have all of that in yeah that's the definition of solubility you have to have all of that in to get the marks and then for properties of ionic compounds, this is unit one. It did not come up in my unit one exam. It means it'll probably come up next year. You had properties of ionic, covalent and metallic bonds and different structures. That was drilled into me by my teacher, which I'm so grateful for because it did help understanding it anyway. And then we have our ionic bond spiel, which is ionic bonds are strong and require a lot of heat energy to break and they're meant to be broken in a giant ionic lattice. They are Soluble in polar solvents, for example, water. They are brittle because whenever you apply a force, a cation could go over a cation and an anion could go over an anion. This is cause this causes repulsion. The whole structure breaks apart. For example, or they are um they do not conduct electricity when in the solid state, but they do in molten or dissolved in water because they contain charged particles that are free to move and carry charge. In this case, cations and anions. So that was drilled into our heads for all the different things that we needed to know, which. Could have come in handy in the exam if it came up but it did not sadly but that was really good just to have all that information stored in my head i was able to bring it back if necessary i hope this video has helped you grasp some things about gcc chemistry and how it is a difficult subject but you can do it by using these tips i've given you to boost your grade to help you do the best revision for chemistry i really hope you do go on and study hard for chemistry and get the best grade you can because to be honest it is one of my favourite subjects out of the four I have because I'm weird like that I have lots of favourite subjects but yes I hope that you enjoy chemistry slightly more you're able to focus on it and get to grasp with all the difficult things that there are in GCSE chemistry that you need to learn for the exam my final tip is learn everything because anything can come up in the exam and you just need to have a good grasp of every little detail in the course but go over it bit by bit over the year and you should get a really good grade. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all later. Bye.